Good morning, YouTubers. Well, a couple things I want to talk about today. Two major subjects, as you can see from the title of the video. First one is guilds, and the second one is sampling. So first, let me just mention a few things about guilds. I'm not a huge joiner of guilds, at least I haven't been in the past. Um, the first guild that I belong to, if you want to call it a guild, is my wife and I. Judy is a spinner, a knitter, and she does a fairly good amount of sewing as well, so maybe you should call her a seamstress. Out of that, I don't do any of those things. I can maybe, maybe if I'm lucky, put a hem on a towel, but that's it. But I'm a weaver. So we've got our own little fiber arts guild in the house of just the two of us. But it's not a very big guild. It's only two of us. So another guild that I joined, oh, four or five years ago is the Northeastern Wisconsin Weavers Guild. It's a fairly small guild, but at most meetings there's four to eight people <laughs> who show up. And it's once a month at the Menasha Public Library, usually on a Wednesday evening. Wednesday? Tuesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Anyways, um, it's interesting, but it is a small group. And most of the people there, I'm the only guy in the group, most of the ladies don't bring weaving to do at the guild meetings. They bring along knitting, and I'm not a knitter. So I kind of get mm, not too sure what's going on. But it is a good group to talk about some weaving things, and we do discuss that. But there's very little hands-on. So while attending one of these meetings at the Menasha Public Library, uh, last year, I think it was in December, um, a new lady to our group joined, and she's also a member of the Wisconsin Hand Weavers Incorporated, which is a guild that meets down in the Milwaukee area. So she was talking about that quite a bit, and I decided to drive down to one of their meetings and check out that guild. Um, I did that in February of this year, and after being at their meeting and listening to them and seeing what was going on, they were having kind of a um, garage sale of different stuff that people had um, that they no longer needed in their weaving or whatever, but thought somebody else might like. Anyways, I decided to join that group. Um, the, the Northeast Wisconsin group is very informal. It meets in Menasha. No dues, nothing like that. Very informal. Wisconsin Hand Weavers does have dues, so I plunked down the 12 and a half bucks to join for a half year because I started in February. So, um, but they meet in Milwaukee, and for me, that's about a hundred mile drive each way. So, it was a decision to join. I'd heard of them before, but I just didn't want to drive that far. So anyways, I did join. Um, like I say, I went to February. Then this stupid coronavirus showed up, and the March meeting was canceled. Except they had screwed up my email address, and I never got the message. So I drove to Milwaukee for the March meeting, and no one was there. Well, almost no one was there. They meet in one of the Milwaukee public schools, and I've forgotten the name of the school. But anyways, they also have a room down in the basement of the school with a boatload of looms. I mean, I can't tell you. It must be 50 or 60 different looms in there. I think they call it the ABK Weaving Center. So I went down there, and while there was no formal meeting, there were probably... 10 people down in the weaving center and I went down and met a few of them and had a nice conversation and visit for about an hour. So I'm going to stick with that group and do the drive to Milwaukee. I don't mind it too much as long as we're not having a blizzard or something. And hopefully that'll turn out to be a worthwhile decision. Then the final guild that I just joined 
is the Jane Stafford Online Guild. Um, that one, I think she charges like about $100 Canadian. Anyways, I joined it and with the exchange rate and everything, I think I paid $71 and some odd cents for a year's membership. But the advantage to it is the, that guild's been going on for like three and a half, four years and you get to watch all the videos from the guild and see everything that's happened since day one. So during this coronavirus thing, I have binge watched the entire first season of her guild slash classes. Um, and I'm about halfway through the second season. I'm finding it very interesting. Um, I probably won't go along with everything she she suggests, but that's normal. Who goes along with 100% of everything from anybody else? Um, one of the things that Jane Stafford talks about is sampling. Uh, she recommends trying a lot of different samplings. So my next big planned project calls for about six yards of material and it's going to be using 16-2 cotylon. Now I did a small project with 16-2 cotylon oh two or three years ago and I wove that in a twill. Stupid telephone. Just a second. Well YouTubers I'm starting over in kind of the middle of this video. Um, I had that phone call from someone and then I restarted and then the battery died like a minute later. So I've forgotten where I was, but I think I had mentioned that I joined the Jane Stafford Online Guild. So I'll edit the video to make it look like I started here. I joined um, about a month ago and I've been watch binge watching um, all of her season one videos. I'm about halfway through the season two videos. Um, I'm learning a fairly good bit. One of the things I like about it is that she is um, a, a Louette loom dealer and she uses mostly Louette looms and since I've got a Louette spring and that also is her favorite loom. Um, there's some good tips on there. So that's really helpful for me. I mean, I've taken classes elsewhere. I went out to Vavstuga. Very interesting. I learned a lot. I'm also learned that I'm glad I don't have a Glamokra loom because I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I do feel much more comfortable with the um, Louette. Okay. One of the things that Jane talks about in her videos is sampling. Um, I'm going to try not to give away any of her stuff that she talks about in, in terms of teaching, but I will say that she recommends sampling an awful lot. And I've got a new project coming up that I want to do using 16-2 uh, Cotillon. Or if you're in Canada, it's 216 Cotlin. Um In one of Jane's documents, she suggests that for 162 cotton, you should, um, the recommended threading is 28 ends per inch. I'm guessing that's right for 162 Cotlin as well, but I'm sampling. So the first thing I did was a 16-2 cotylon set, as Jane suggested, at 28 ends per inch. I've woven it, taken it, cut it off the loom, and run it through the wash just to see how it is, and it feels really decent. Right now on the loom, I have got that same warp reslayed from a this was done in a 12 dent reed 
slaying two, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three. Now I'm in a ten dent reed slayed at three, 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 threes all the way to get me 30 ends per inch. And I'm going to try weaving this when I get done with using up the, the end of my two yard warp here. I'm going to take it off the loom and run it through the wash machine. And once I've done that, I will decide which I like better, the 28 ends per inch or the 30 ends per inch. And I'm trying to be very careful to get about the same number of picks per inch as I have warp threads per inch, which is why if you look at this, I did a checkerboard and it, they're pretty square because I have the same number of threads of warp as I do weft b between the, the uh, checks. And I'm trying to do the same thing with what's on the loom. The difference being so I can tell them apart after the fact is for this one I used red warp threads for separators and red weft threads for separators and the one that's on the loom still I've still got the red warp threads but I now have green weft threads so I can check out whether or not things are square when I'm counting my threads anyways that's what I'm doing for sampling um, let's advance this work just a little bit and just weave a couple of uh, shots to show you how it's looking. I gotta go around that green one at the edge. Zoom you in a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. looks like it's right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So there's the white. Now we'll put in a green. And there's one little set done. So I'll let you know in a future video the results of this sampling whether I choose to do my big project that I'm that I'm hoping to do with 28 or with 30 ends per inch when I get around to it but it'll be a plain weave which is why I'm sampling in plain weave and it'll be either 28 or 30 ends per inch there's the first sample that I did um, at 28 ends per inch of 16.2 cotylon. Then I decided to try for 30 ends per inch. Not a big difference, but I just wanted to see if there was one and what, it, what they felt like. So here's the 30 ends per inch sample. We'll bring it in close. Um, and this one, instead of using a red weft accent, I'm using a green weft accent. That's how I can tell which one is which after they're off the loom like this. So yes, I did have to re-slay the uh, reed, but I didn't have to redo the, the heddles or any of that stuff. I just cut one off, re-slayed the reed, retied, and finished. Um, I think I am going to use the 28 ends per inch one. 
Um, how do I describe it? Those just that little bit makes the cloth feel just a little bit softer and lighter. It's got you won't be able to see this, but when I hold it up to a window, I can see a little bit of negative space in that, a little bit of openings between. And if I hold this one up, not quite as much. So we're going to use the 28 ends per inch to do the big project, and that'll be the next video. Um, I need a new shirt. So, anyways, that's what's going to be next, and that's what I've done for sampling. So, if you like my videos, I'd appreciate you subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, thanks a million, and we'll catch you the next time around on YouTube. Bye-bye.